Matthew Henry's Commentary on the Whole Bible Jacob's Bargain with Laban B.100 1745-25 And it came to pass, when Rachel had borne Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go unto mine own place, and to my country. 26 Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. 27 And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favour in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. 28 And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. 29 And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. 30 For it was little which thou hast before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude, and the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming, and now when shall I provide for mine own house also? 31 And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything, if thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. 32 I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. 33 So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. 34 And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. 35 And he removed that day the he goats that were ring straked and spotted, and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. 36 And he set three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Genesis 30, 25 to 36. We have here. 1. Jacob's thoughts of home. He faithfully served his time out with Laban, even his second apprenticeship, though he was an old man, had a large family to provide for, and it was high time for him to set up for himself. Though Laban's service was hard, and he had cheated him in the first bargain he had made, yet Jacob honestly performs his engagements. Note, a good man, though he sweared to his own hurt will not change. And though others have deceived us this will not justify us in deceiving them. Our rule is to do as we would be done by, not as we are done by. Jacob's term having expired, he begs leave to be gone. Verse 25. Observe, 1. He retained his affection for the land of Canaan, not only because it was the land of his nativity, and his father and mother were there, whom he longed to see, but because it was the land of promise, and, in token of his dependence upon the promise of it, though he sojourn in her and he can by no means think of settling there. Thus should we be affected towards our heavenly country, looking upon ourselves as strangers here, viewing the heavenly country as our home, and longing to be thee, as soon as the days of our service upon earth are numbered and finished. We must not think of taking route here, for this is not our place and country. Hebrews 13. 14. 2. He was desirous to go to Canaan, though he had a great family to take with him, and no provision yet made for them. He had got wives and children with Laban, but nothing else, yet he does not solicit Laban to give him either a portion with his wives or the maintenance of some of his children. No, all his request is, give me my wives and my children, and send me away. Verse 25, 26. Note, those that trust in God, in his providence and promise, though they have great families and small incomes, can cheerfully hope that he who sends mouths will send meat. He who feeds the brood of the ravens will not starve the seed of the righteous. 2. Laban's desire of his stay, verse 27. In love to himself, not to Jacob or to his wives or children, Laban endeavors to persuade him to continue his chief shepherd, entreating him, by the regard he bore him, not to leave him, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry. Note churlish selfish men know how to give good words when it is to serve their own ends. Laban found that his stock had wonderfully increased with Jacob's good management, and he owns it, with very good expressions of respect both to God and Jacob, I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Observe, 1. Laban's learning, I have learned by experience. Note, 
There is many a profitable good lesson to be learned by experience. We are very unapt scholars if we have not learned by experience the evil of sin, the treachery of our own hearts, the vanity of the world, the goodness of God, the gains of godliness, and the like. 2. Laban's Lesson He owns, 1, that his prosperity was owing to God's blessing, the Lord has blessed me. Note, worldly men, who choose their portion in this life, are often blessed with an abundance of this world's goods. Common blessings are given plentifully to many that have no title to covenant, blessings. 3. That Jacob's piety had brought that blessing upon him, the Lord has blessed me, not for my own sake, let not such a man as Laban, that lives without God in the world, think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, Jam. 1. 7. But for thy sake. Note, 1. Good men are blessings to the places where they live, even where they live meanly and obscurely, as Jacob in the field, and Joseph in the prison, chapter 39. 23. 2. God often blesses bad men with outward mercies for the sake of their godly relations, though it is seldom that they have either the wit to see it or the grace to own it, as Laban did here. 3. The new bargain they came upon. Laban's craft and covetousness took advantage of Jacob's plainness honesty, and good nature, and, perceiving that Jacob began to be won upon by his fair speeches, instead of making him a generous offer and bidding high, as he ought to have done, all things considered, he puts it upon him to make his demands, verse 28, appoint me thy wages, knowing he would be very modest in them, and would ask less than he could for shame offer. Jacob accordingly makes a proposal to him, in which, 1. He shows what reason he had to insist upon so much, considering, 1. That Laban was bound in gratitude to do well for him, because he had served him not only faithfully, but very successfully, verse 30. Yet here observe how he speaks, like himself, very modestly. Laban had said, The Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Jacob will not say so, but, the Lord has blessed thee since my coming. Note. Humble saints take more pleasure in doing good than in hearing of it again. 2. That he himself was bound in duty to take care of his own family, now, when shall I provide for my own house also? Note, faith and charity, though they are excellent things, must not take us off from making necessary provisions for our own support, and the support of our families. We must, like Jacob, trust in the Lord and do good, and yet we must, like him, provide for our own houses also, he that does not the latter is worse than an infidel, 1 Timothy 5. 8. 2. He is willing to refer himself to the providence of God, which, he knew, extends itself to the smallest things, even the color at the cattle, and he will be content to have for his wages the sheep and goats of such and such a color, speckled, spotted, and brown, which should hereafter be brought forth, verse 32. 33. This, he thinks, will be a most effectual way both to prevent Laban's cheating him and to secure himself from being suspected of cheating Laban. Some think he chose this color because in Canaan it was generally most desired and delighted in. Their shepherds in Canaan are called Nekahim, Amos 1. 1. The word here used for speckled, and Laban was willing to consent to this bargain because he thought if the few he has that were now speckled and spotted were separated from the rest, which by agreement was to be done immediately, the body of the flock which Jacob was to tend, being of one color, either all black or all white, would produce few or none of mixed colors, and so he should have Jacob's service for nothing, or next to nothing. According to this bargain, those few that were party, colored were separated and put into the hands of Laban's sons, and sent three days journey off, so great was Laban's jealously lest any of them should mix with the rest of the flock, to the advantage of Jacob. And now a fine bargain Jacob has made for himself. Is this his providing for his own house, to put it upon such an uncertainty? If these cattle bring forth, as usually cattle do, young ones of the same color with themselves, he must still serve for nothing, and be a drudge and a beggar all the days of his life but he knows whom he has trusted, and the event showed, 1, that he took the best way that could be taken with Laban, who otherwise would certainly have been too hard for him, and, 2, that it was not in vain to rely upon the divine providence, 
which owns and blesses honest humble diligence. Those that find men whom they deal with unjust and unkind shall not find God so, but, some way or other, he will recompense the injured, and be a good pay, master to those that commit their cause to him.